Hello again, we're live! Behind me you can see Nihonbashi. That's where I did the last live stream from about 15 minutes ago and I'm still in the area to show you another really historical marker. A one that I think is really cool because I've been living in Japan for about 20 years now and this place that I'm about to show you is something that I learned about from reading this book. It's Shogun. And a lot of you that are interested in Japan probably might have picked it up, given it a read. It's a, it's a pretty thick book. <laughs> this book is about 20 years old and it, it smells it uh, like, like an old library. But I, I wanted to get, get a chance to, to bring you this to this spot since I'm in the area. This is a spot that I came and I found after reading this book. I went on, I went um, online. We didn't really have the internet too much in Japan at that time, but I found out where there was a marker that represented where the blue-eyed samurai used to live. And, that, and a lot of the stuff in the book is factually correct, which I, which I thought was pretty interesting. So I'm still in Nihonbashi. This is the area right here. This is the mercantile area of, of Tokyo. Lots and lots of buildings. Lots and lots of, of uh, ambulances. There's a hospital nearby. streaming you never know what's gonna happen I hope whoever's in there is okay so I'm on the main road here and I'm gonna be taking a detour down this side street so right behind me it's Mitsukoshi department store and down this side street is where I'm gonna be showing you that there's a subway station the, the uh, Mitsukoshi Mitsukoshi Mai subway station and the uh, Nihonbashi subway station so let's take a look down this this highway this sideway, <laughs> this alley. I'm gonna show you something from this book. Shogun. We're gonna bring this novel to life. Not a lot of people know about this. It's not something that's in guidebooks. It's not something that is promoted. It's just something for geeks like myself that uh, I, I try to find the the truth behind the stuff that I read and the stuff that I see and I found it um, this is this area is pretty cool because it's where the the old and the new has sort of come together you can see this alley sorry manhole got some this is Tokyo's manhole cover it's a sakura leaf and there's a lot of old cafes with some trendy shops um, this area of Tokyo this area of Tokyo is really coming to life with the, the 2020 Olympics coming Nihonbashi is a pretty important area and it's right in the center of the city this is literally well pretty pretty darn close I would say the the Imperial Palace where the Emperor lives that might be the center of the city this is just maybe 800 meters away less than a kilometer away so we're pretty center right now Okay, so we're almost there. This is cool. We're bringing an old novel to life. Did I pass it? <laughs> that would stink if I passed it. No way. Oh, there's the building right there. Oh, okay. I sort of just passed it. So look back. You can see this department store. And there it is. Between the two buildings. That marker right there represents a piece of history of Tokyo's international past. And Tokyo does not have a very big international past. A lot of Tokyo's history is um, closed, where the country didn't allow foreigners in. But, but, there was a time where a guy named William Adams, William Adams 
he was a white guy from Europe. He was English, and his boat came to um, I guess it was what, what Shikoku, uh, not Shikoku, um, uh, Shizuoka on the on the peninsula there in Izu, and they captured him and they brought him to Tokugawa Ieyasu, who was the shogun at the time. And this marker represents where his house used to stand. He was giving a house by Tokugawa, Ieyasu Tokugawa. And the, the plaque here reads, the stone reads, in memory of William Adams, known as Miura Anjin, or Navigator, the first Englishman to settle in Japan, coming as pilot on board of the charity in 1600. This is a long time ago, everybody who resided in a mansion built on this spot, who instructed Ieyasu, and Ieyasu is Tokugawa, the, the shogun, the first Tokugawa shogun on gunnery, geography, mathematics, etc., and constructed for him several ships on the European model while rendering valuable services in foreign affairs, and who married a Japanese lady, Miss Magome, and died in April 24th, 1620 at the age of 57 years old built by some Japanese <laughs> in May 1951 and you can see here's the Japanese explanation if you have read if you've read Shogun this has some meaning to you because it it takes you from the pages of this book from the pages of history and brings you straight into the real world and that's super cool and this stone is very very hard to find so hopefully you, if, if you come to Nihonbashi where the bridge is over there you'll be able to walk over and and if you have time and you have read this book or you've seen the mini series um, which I think you can get on DVD uh, Shogun by uh, James James Clavel you're gonna find this marker and if you know anything about the history of Japan you're gonna know how important this foreigner was William Adams and you know I guess we who live here in Japan we sort of um, the longer you stay here the longer you start kind of seeing the way that he lived his life if you study history on what happened to him and uh, you can see he just totally fell in love with Japan and he became Japan Japanified and at the end this I believe he could just leave at any time but he decided to stay in Japan and he ended up dying. Um, his gravesite is down in um, uh, Nagasaki. Nagasaki was the hub, the port where, at that time, Japan was closed. Foreigners could not. He saw in this in this six, 17th century, William Adams. This guy saw Japan that was closed to everybody in the world, and what he saw with his blue eyes is something that you know only Japanese had seen at the time. And now this stone. This stone is hidden between two buildings, still exists uh, here in Nihonbashi, and it marks where his house used to be. His house, of course, I don't think he paid anything. I think William Adams, you know, he's, when you're, when you're the Shogun's friend, you could probably get anything that you want. You just snap your fingers at the time. He goes, yeah, I'm William Adams. He probably got seats in all the good restaurants back in the 1600s. But you can see the stone between the red, red building. Do you see it? Right there. <laughs> Tokyo is full of these. Tokyo is full of uh, these secret places. You, I think if you look up here, you want to find it. There's the highway that goes through there. You can look for this jewelry store, Tagawa, and the red building here, which is a. Uh, it's not a sushi shop, but they're promoting it. And then that stone is really hard to see, everybody. So now I think with this video, you're going to be able to find it. Right over there straight ahead is the Mitsukoshi department store, which is very famous. So use that as markers, this alley here. You'll find it. And if you do, bring your copy of Shogun with you. <laughs> and then reread it when you come to Japan. Because, you know, James Clavel, he did a pretty good job writing this. Back then there was not a lot of information on Japan, but he got a he got some things wrong, but he got a lot of stuff right. And um, after seeing that marker and reading the inscription, you have a, a lot of respect for uh, James Clavel and you have a lot of respect for um, like Japanese history and William Adams. William Adams, because if you study Japan and you want to know about foreigners living in, in Japan, and I'm one of them, 
I don't I'm not gonna be in any I'm not going to be in any history books but William Adams is because he's the first one who came and made a big impact on Japan and uh, well the first the first um, there are probably some some religious people here from Portugal but he's the first guy to make an impact on Japan he had the Shogun's ear that's pretty cool there's a lot of really that's gyoza I'm getting hungry <laughs> maybe that's a pretty cool looking gyoza restaurant do you think William Adams would approve there's 36 seats there's bags of rice Gyoza. So that's the Nihonbashi area. So this video, right before it, I made a video on the Nihonbashi Bridge, which is about 300 meters, 200 meters away. Look at all these little trendy shops. The Saigon Kitchen. Coffee shop. Again, this is different from when William Adams was here. <laughs> a lot of really trendy shops coming through. So there you have it. I just wanted to make a really short video on uh, some Japanese history. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment uh, comments below and I'll try to answer them. Especially if you try to come and find this spot and you get lost. Um, yeah, use this video as a marker. Living history. Hope you enjoyed it. I'm gonna turn the camera around for the last couple of seconds. Thank you very much, everybody, wherever you are in the world. Have a great day, great night. Bye from Tokyo.